Connecting it, all I have to do is connect my phone to this and then it puts the image onto here. So we'll do it. You can already tell this rug is gonna be so sick. <laughs> all right, this might be the most ghetto thing I've ever done for my rug frame before, but I don't have a yarn stand right now, so I just cut a piece of wood drilled it onto this part from the bottom side. Then I literally just used the drill bit and cut through the screwdriver. And then I put a screw on the bottom. So the screw is going directly into the screwdriver. This thing is stuck on there. So I'm gonna use this to put my yarn on. And then I have this Home Depot paint stick that I drilled on. And the yarn's gonna go through here and into my rug gun. But hey, this, is basically all you need like if you could find stuff around your house just do that i am eventually going to sell a yarn holder that is similar to this but it has a wooden dowel uh you could also make it yourself at home but i'm going to sell it for, for for pretty cheap on my website uh soon but yeah this is basically all you need and the reason why i had to make one is because i moved across the country and i didn't bring it with me uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, so got my rug gun plugged in and my handy dandy little loop threader thingy. This is the rug gun I'm using. If you haven't seen it before, this is what I use to make rugs and you can purchase it on my website, imakerugs.com. I'll have it linked in the description below. And yeah, let's get started. So when I put the rug, when I put the yarn into the rug gun, I want to have the rug gun off. I'm going to put it into this loop right here and then into this hole right here. But I use this loop threader and put it through like that. Then I put the yarn through this. It just makes it a lot easier to put the yarn through my gun. Put it through like that. And we give a loop threader with every purchase of a rug gun and we give them for free with fabric purchases as well. So you just pull it like that. Now your rug gun's ready to use. So just keep this in my pocket, that way I don't lose it. And start using the rug gun. So when you're using the rug gun, if you don't know by now, you have to push against the fabric because if you're not pushing against your frame or your fabric you're going to end up with holes in your gun in your fabric and it's just not going to look right so don't be afraid to put pressure against your uh, frame and fabric and go ahead and turn your rug gun on and go in an upward motion you never want to push downward because that's another way you could cause holes into the fabric so it's kind of like a sewing machine and notice how I'm just clicking it on and off. Uh, the trigger that we have for this gun is very like sensitive, so you could easily just press this over and over and over. So I'm just going decent speed. You notice when I'm turning, I do this. I don't move my whole entire both of my arms, because it's just easier to turn with one hand. But you'll get the hang of it after a while. Now I'll show you how it looks on the back side. Comes out nice and fuzzy. done with my yarn all I do is wrap both of them up together because typically well not typically basically all the time I use double yarn so I just wrap both of the yarn pieces like this or else it starts to get all messy so this keeps it pretty stable and I paid ten dollars well five dollars each for this yarn at Hobby Lobby 
and then five dollars each for the black that i'm going to be putting on so that comes out to twenty dollars and i have left over so let's say i'm spending probably around 15 bucks on this rug that's another awesome thing about just investing in rug making once you have the materials once you have the rug gun you could basically make rugs for fairly cheap obviously i'm not counting the fabric but um a piece of fabric so like this fabric that i sell uh the smaller one is able to make three rugs this size and that's 35 35 bucks for the one where you can make three big size rugs or 70 bucks for one that you can make six rugs and um yeah that's pretty good considering 35 times or divided by three whatever that is i i can't do math right now but pretty good margins for if you're gonna sell a rug because typically people sell rugs like this or around this size like you could kind of tell how big it is um for about 150 to 200 even more just depending on how much you want to price it some people go cheaper like $80 it just depends on how much you want to price it if you want to make money faster or I don't know let's say you're doing a commission for somebody that you know you want to price it better but typically I see rugs going for around I feel like around a hundred to five hundred dollars usually anything lower than that um, probably gonna sell fairly quickly if you gain an audience but yeah even if you don't really have a giant audience and you're making rugs of like different niche things such as like cars that are very popular or certain logos or things like that and you put them on etsy or depop or uh trendy like types of apps like that people are bound to spend money to buy it because they want like a custom rug that nobody else is gonna have so like if you're gonna if you plan on doing that i plan i would say to price them a little bit lower but if you kind of already built an audience um then i would say that you could start to higher your prices a little bit more but it's all up to you this right here adjusts the speed i sped it up a little bit more just because i don't know it's a it's easier to not easier, but I want to get it done a little bit faster. When you're first starting out, I'd recommend putting it at the lowest speed. But you'll get the hang of it going faster and faster. I never really have it at the highest speed, though, because that's like a little too high. Like this. So I kind of put it in the middle. Okay, so the rug is done. I don't really want to show the backside even though it looks amazing but i want to wait till it's completely done uh i gotta to go to walmart because i gotta get elmer's glue the glue that i typically use is called aat 1132 and it's by a company called bond products but i didn't i wasn't able to bring it when i moved over to where i'm at now so i'm gonna go ahead and use elmer's glue for the first time and see how well it works Now I'm just using this dog de shedder that I got at a yard sale. And you could tell I've been doing it on this side. Look how much cleaner it is compared to this side. 
And here's the finished rug, guys. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. And remember, if you want to get started making your own rugs, go to imakerugs.com. Okay, bye.